All right, uh, I'm going to show a feature of this um, DC load that is new to me and I want to play with it. Um, it seems like it would come in really, really handy. Um, I thought about adding it to one of my home built ones, but it's a lot of work. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about. We'll go into shift menu. Uh, we'll go here to something called list set. So I can have a list of numbers, okay? And so uh, list set. Uh, all right, I can do, uh, let's see here, edit. Edit list file, I think that's the one. And the current list, all right. So uh, you can create a list of numbers, and here we have uh, we have uh, five numbers. Okay, so we have we have five, and then you can say uh, at the very beginning, what current do you want? Uh, 100 milliamps, and I'm going to hold that 100 milliamps for 10 milliseconds, and then I'm going to go to half an amp for five milliseconds, and then I'm going to drop back down to 100 milliamps for five milliseconds. And then I, I'm going to go up to an amp, one amp, uh, for two milliseconds, and then come back down to 300 milliamps for 10 milliseconds. So that's my cycle, okay? And I can run this and have the machine do all of that, and we can look at how the power supply responds to this, okay? So let's escape out of here. All right, you need to hit the trigger to turn it on. So you say shift trigger, and that should turn it on. All right, so um, let's go over to the oscilloscope and I'll show you what's going on. All right, and I uh, have it set so 0 volt, 5 volt, 10 volt, 12 volt. So we have the 12 volt supply, and we can see there's maybe a little bit of noise on it. I hope you can catch that. There's a little bit, little bit on there. All right, we can do something like a, uh, uh, we could DC, we could, we could AC couple it, all right? And then we can zoom in on that. And I think you can see that. And let's set our trigger so it's gonna see something. There we go. So uh, we have our 100 milliamps, 300 milliamps, back to 100, I don't remember now. Anyway, you know, it goes up and down. Oh, that's right. Uh, the higher the value, the less current, right? This is the droop. So 100 milliamp, 300 milliamp, 100 milliamp, 1 amp, 300, I don't know. Anyway, you remember the, you remember the list. And we can see how our power supply is, is doing there. Now, where AC couples, we might get some droop in the, in the actual data. So instead of doing an AC couple, we're going to do a DC couple with a 12 volt offset, all right? And uh, that's going to give us a better representation of what's going on here. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Did not want that. I wanted a trigger button. And let's make this bigger. Oops. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, shoot, I did it again. Ah, I'm reaching over the thing there we go so there is what's going on um, and we can see that we have a little bit of ringing a little bit of ringing on the edges that power supply is trying to catch up really quick so there's a little bit of overshoot undershoot so it's just a fast transient on the uh, so on the uh, on the uh, power supply now this particular power supply is just a um, 7812. So it's just a three terminal regulator, um, and that's what it's doing. The other nice thing about doing a DC measurement with an offset is we can actually measure the actual voltage droops, right? So it's starting out around 12.3, and then at it, when it's drawing one amp, it drops it down to 12 volts, all right? So you can see how you're doing there. So if you're drawing lots of current, maybe, you know, maybe you'll drop down too far. You might find that your, your, your particular use case 
is that you maybe you turn a motor on here, a one amp motor or something, and it's dropping you down to 11 volts, and then that maybe is bad for the rest of the circuit. So your circuit might be better to run a little bit hot so that when you get that one amp of current draw, it only takes it down to, uh, takes it down to 12 volts, and then the rest of your circuit is happy. Uh-huh. Let's see here. We have some fuzz on it. A lot of times people say, oh, we are at 20 megahertz. All right, so we're at 20 megahertz bandwidth. Yeah, so here's a lot of fuzz. I went to 350 megahertz bandwidth, and that's probably just uh, uh, ground leads and stuff like that picking up, picking up noise. I don't think it's the actual power supply. Um, you have to be worried about is this really, if, if this is real or not. In order to do power supply measurements, you really should keep everything shielded and short leads and stuff like that. Um, but uh, for this particular case, what we're really, oops, what we're really worried about is the, uh, the DC, the DC numbers. And so uh, we can make it, we can make it nice and clean to see these DC numbers. All right, this machine has another way of doing it. And uh, I'm not going to demo it. I'm just going to talk about it. There's actually an A setting and a B setting. And uh, you can set two levels and then it'll just pop up and down between those two levels. Um, so it's an easier way to do a quick transient response uh, instead of going through and creating a list. Now the list function is very interesting. All right, so the list function uh, you can have one file that has a thousand different levels, or you can have two files that have 500 levels, or eight files that have 120 different levels. So, and, and, and that's the memory uh, limitation of the machine, the EEPROM. It remembers all of this. So uh, I don't think there's any reason I would ever want a thousand, a thousand different current steps, but uh, uh, having eight different memories uh, with a 120 steps seems uh, way more than I would ever need. Uh, sounds, sounds good to me. Anyway, just a quick demo of the list mode.